Hey guys, this is Shy. Welcome to my channel. Uh, this is your pick a card reading focusing on what you need to heal as well as uh, more importantly how you can heal that and move on to a life where you're not plagued and traumatized by those things that have happened to you in your past or in past lives. So I'd like to jump right into it because I think that is pretty self-explanatory. So go ahead and pick a card using your intuition in whatever manner you prefer and uh, the links will be down in the subscription box and let's get right into it. Hey guys, this is for the top left pile and these cards kind of immediately harmonized for me. Uh, I, I really like this, but uh, let's uh, get right into it. Starting with the first tarot card over on the left here, the six of wands from the crow tarot and uh, you know, we have this crow being upheld as this kind of hero figure. Um, with the Six of Wands, I always think about how, you know, this is a card that follows the Five of Wands, which is that conflict and battle. So the Six of Wands is that, like, returning uh, heroic figure. You know, he might have uh, been, a, you know, a great champion in, in the battle. But in the battle has been won, but, you know, the war is not over. Uh, so that is sort of, like, the starting position of whatever it is that you need to heal kind of came from that and you might be wondering well the six of wands is a pretty good pretty good card why would that uh you know what could have traumatized me or hurt me from that but you know getting those moments of victory there especially when it's the six of wands style when it's winning the battle but not winning the war is uh not always as easy for us to handle uh, as we imagine, and there can be a lot more subtle consequences to that, uh, especially because, you know, after the tide comes in, where does the tide go? The tide goes out, right? After the wheel of fortune comes to the, the top, where does it go? It goes down. And, you know, moving through your tarot cards here, we have uh, the middle card, which is the three of pentacles. Interesting thing about this one is that this deck should have been all... Uh, upright. I typically don't read reversals like right now. I kind of uh, go in and out with them. I have <laughs> I have phases uh, with reversals because a lot of time I feel like there's no need to read reversals because you know the energies of a card upright and reversed are always there, and I I just kind of use you know my intuition in the context of the cards to tell you know which energy wants to come out. But every once in a while, uh, if I'm in a period where I'm making sure all my decks stay shuffled uh, upright. Uh, I will nevertheless get a card that inexplicably pops out uh, upside down. So <laughs> uh, we're definitely going to be taking this uh, reverse three of pentacles into account here. And you can tell just by how this crow is hanging upside down and, you know, gathering these uh, cherries or berries that are, you know, growing upright. You know, lots of birds hang upside down, but crows, I mean, I've never seen a crow hang upside down. They're not typically an upside down type of a... Uh, uh, species as far as I'm aware. So this crow feels like everything that should be going well suddenly went like catty wampus. You know, he had his victory, uh, but it wasn't what he thought. And especially with the three pentacles being that card of teamwork, right? You got your, your team down here, your team of crows, and you maybe entered after this period of achievement and success, you entered what you thought would be a period of harmonious uh, teamwork or at least a period where you were supported by your peers or your family um, whatever kind of group situation this is there's always that group context uh, and so I feel like the wound here that you need to heal definitely stems from your interactions with a group and you know these energies go both ways uh, any any kind of pain stemming from group interactions you know we don't want to be focusing on, you know, the point here isn't to be blaming, you know, going, oh, these people caused me all this pain because they were so horrible to me. You know, they really hurt me. Uh, you know, and even if they really actually did, I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> you know, that people didn't do horrible things to you. I definitely with this uh, uh, three of pentacles reversed, I think, you know, something abusive could have been happening in the home. You could have been having a really hard time at work or at school on some kind of group project. You know, this really speaks to me of, you know, the kind of bullying that we all, or, you know, not everybody, I do actually know people who weren't bullied in, in school, which is 
always kind of surprises me that I find that those people actually exist because most of us feel that that we you know had a really hard time in school. Um, it's it's that kind of feeling, but you know, as a kid who was picked on more than almost any other kid in my elementary school. Uh, looking back, I understand that I actually had a role to play in my own victimization. And, you know, I don't want to be getting into victim blaming and all that, but there is, you know, and I'm, I'm speaking from my own personal experience here. So I, I'm just going to just focus on my personal experience and you can, you know, relate to that as you will. I, I think that's how I'd like to do this. Uh, you know, I was such a weird, weird kid. Uh, you know, I was like, have you ever seen a bunch of chicks? And one of them has like a, if one of them is like injured or is born with a deformity, like uh, I knew, I saw a bunch of chicks where one of them had a gimped up leg. Like, we, you know, we were in grade six and we were having chicks in, we were raising chicks in the classroom in an incubator, but one of them, his leg was all like crooked and the other chicks were pecking him to death. So we actually had to take special care of him. We all took turns keeping him on his desk and we called him gimpy, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, so I really related to that chick, obviously, because I was like that. I was that kid that showed up to school. It was just so weird. It was so incomprehensible to the other kids that I got picked on. But of course, I had a role to play here because, I mean, even though in some respects, you know, I was born the way I am. But, you know, when I would go to school, I didn't know how to include myself like at all. I remember staring at like I wanted to play blocks like in my kindergarten class. All the other little kids were playing with the blocks and I loved to play with blocks. So I wanted to go over there. But I had no idea how to include myself. I would just stand there and stare at them. And eventually this would kind of creep them out. And then of course they would start, you know, like throwing things at me because I was being super creepy and super weird. And of course it's time. Then of course, you know, I develop a chip on my shoulder because all the kids are making fun of me. And then I just get more and more uh, alienated and I behave in a way that it makes it impossible for me to be included. Right. You know, I would show up to school with like my hair covering my face and I would just be looking down at my shoes and I was scared to talk to anybody. And I would be mean to people who would try to be nice to me because I was always afraid that they would be out to get me. Um, you know, so I absolutely was being treated terribly by some of the other kids. You know, I had kids, th you know, circle around and throw rocks at me and and, you know, other little girls really going out of the way to steal my stuff and, you know, torment me, you know, the usual kind of childhood bullying, right? There wasn't really anything particularly out of the ordinary, but it was really incessant uh, for me. Um, so there, there's that side of it where the other kids were being horrible, but there was also me over here not really doing anything to help my situation. And in fact, I was doing a lot of things that just made it more likely for my own bullying to continue. And I didn't r really realize this until I was older, starting to be right when I was like around maybe 11. Uh, and, you know, I started to hold my head up high and to shrug people off more and to stare people in the eye. And, you know, of course I was still being really combative, but so that didn't really get me included when I, when I learned to stand up for myself, but it did get people to back off, right? Um, and this is a long tangent about myself, but I feel like that was the best way for me to explain this energy of, you know, being alienated and victimized, how there are things we do when, when things aren't going our way, you know, we can blame it entirely on everybody else and how they're treating us, but that's not typically the whole story there. We do have things we can do to worsen or better our situation and we can influence how other people treat us. And that is really, really coming through for me here. So um, I hope that, you know, <laughs> anecdote uh, resonates with you a little bit with your situation. Um, so you can think about what you can be doing to improve your situation um, in the way you interact with others. Um, even if they've been horrible to you and abused you, what can you do to try start down the path of extricating yourself and that is what uh the next card the four of swords is talking about uh as you can see this four of swords the guy doesn't just look like he's you know chilling out like taking a sleep this crow it's really obvious because it's a crow right when he's on his back and his feet in the air this bird looks dead like this four of swords looks dead and the people the two crows out in the window they're outside 
So this Four of Swords is really hard hitting to me more so than regular Four of Swords where it's just like a dude kind of chilling out and taking a nap and really more indicative of a, um, you know, deep contemplative rest and relaxing. And this energy is definitely here. But I think this card is telling you to like really get out, like extricate yourself from whatever situation you are in to the point where, you know, you, it's almost like this crow, which I think is you, can be dead to these people, where they can be looking at you through the window, but they can't be hurting you anymore. They're outside. You're in here, chilling out, going through, uh, you know, like a death-like transformation, but, you know, you're going to need to go through a cocooning phase where you, <laughs> where you slow down, chill out, and think about how you want to reinvent yourself, but in the process, you're also getting yourself away from these people, and they might be looking through the window, but, you know, now they're looking through the window. They're no longer next to you doing whatever it is, you know, interacting with you in that way that has been, you know, that <laughs> that created the situation where this Three of Pentacles was reversed, where everything that should have been harmonious and beautiful in a, you know, in a teamwork sort of way went wrong. So, and this cyclical energy of, healing and rebirth comes up beautifully uh, with this hair card. Uh, because this card talks about, um, it, like the blurb in the book talks about uh, a story about a spring, a goddess of springtime. And she finds a hair that is all frozen from the winter, you know, has been so, this poor, poor hair has been so beaten down uh, and frozen by the winter that uh, even though she's a goddess, she can't revive him. She can't heal him or bring him back. Um, but of course, she's so moved uh, by the helplessness of this poor little creature who, you know, doesn't deserve to be frozen by winter, that she uh, puts him back into an egg. And in his egg, you know, it's like being in the cocoon. It's like being this uh, crow that is checked right out uh the hair gets to be reborn. Uh, so he wasn't able to be healed uh, as he was, but he was able to go into a transformative cocoon-like state inside of the egg, just just like this crow. Uh, and then he can be reborn and come out uh, as himself, but as a new self. It's like, you know, he's going to he's gonna be a hare. You know, obviously hares don't hatch out of eggs, but he's going to hatch out of this egg completely reborn. So this is going to be really a, a phoenix story for you, especially with this void card. Um, if, if you can see what it says here. Stop. Embrace winter. Great cosmic womb. You know, and the card just shows, to me, this is more than just the emptiness of space. It is, it is, I mean, it's the void. It's the abyss. So in your upside down dead crow nap, <laughs> in your hair, when you're the hair inside of that egg being reborn, you know, that is when you're entering this void state. And that is what is going to let you heal that which couldn't be healed normally. And, you know, I was, <laughs> I was, wow, this is actually uh, really profound for me because I was, as I was walking the dog this morning, I was actually thinking about exactly this. Like, how do you heal something that is so trauma traumatic that it can't be healed? Like, and I was like, well, you have to be completely, you have to be completely reborn. You have to do it over. Um, and I actually just finished reading Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I mean, you know, I'm, we all know the story of Lord of the Rings, right? So I don't need to worry about spoilers. You know, at the end, Frodo is so traumatized by that, that which he had to do that he can't be healed, like, you know, in Middle Earth. He has to go, he has to depart, um, you know, and go into the West and be, that is where he can be completely healed because he has to, but he has to leave everything that he ever knew behind and go, you know, if you're into Lord of the Rings, you know, he's going out to, you know, where the, the Valar, you know, the gods uh, and where the elves live. He's going basically to heaven to, you know, to a place that is divine and 
rich and full of healing. Uh, but to do that, he has to go, he has to go through the void, you know, the ship that Frodo travels on when he leaves Middle Earth and, you know, travels to the West. Uh, he's, he's, he's not going through, you know, he's not just going on the ocean. He's going through the void to get there. So I guess, uh, to sum this all up is you, you need to heal the trauma that has been inflicted upon you in your group interactions. And to do that, you're going to need to go into a deep, deep healing state. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to last, but just let, uh, the transformation occur, you know, uh, whether it has to be happening, uh, really physically, tangibly, you know, where you move, uh, away from a situation or whether you quit a job, you know, even if you're getting uh, rid of all of your possessions and moving to a new country or you're leaving your job or you're completely like gardening, uh, weeding your garden of friends, uh, whether it's a breakup, whether it is aspects of your own like consciousness that have been tormenting you and you're letting go of those and keeping only the aspects of yourself that serve you. Um, you're, you're, it might, this might feel, you know, in like 21st century human terms, it might have the, the energy of like hitting rock bottom. Um, but it's, it's not really rock bottom. It's part of this rebirth cycle. Just remember that you are the hair inside of the egg being put there so that you can, uh, heal inside of the void and transform and be reborn. And that is all I'm seeing for you guys. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Please uh, leave me a comment if this resonated with you at all, because this is a new project for me, and I would really like to hear from, from anybody who uh, listened to this. Uh, so thank you very much, and hope to see you guys again. Hey guys, this is for the top right pile, and you, <laughs> this spread is really telling me that whatever healing you guys need to do, uh, you're sort of right on the precipice of it. Like it, uh, it hasn't, you might be aware that it needs to be happening and you might be, you know, it's sort of like a smoker thinking about quitting, but you haven't actually really made an attempt to quit yet. Uh, because you start with the, uh, page of swords, which to me, this, this crow tarot page of swords is really, uh, somebody running into battle recklessly uh without really you know being being naive about it you know like sort of like a how a lot of young men were before world war one uh you know actually excited to go off to war because they you know were farm farm boys who had no idea you know what going to the trenches was actually going to be like and they were excited about it um so I see that uh, kind of mentality as the root of your problem, whatever. It's not like, you know, for most of you watching this probably haven't fought in a war, <laughs> um, hopefully. So I don't think it was like an actual, you know, battle like that. But that kind of energy, there was something you charged into um, with complete naivety. And you were kind of willing almost like willing to do damage. Like you, you were willing to put yourself out there. You were willing to have skin in the game, uh, so to speak. Um, this could have even been, I keep thinking of like a, like a school environment. If somebody went to, went off to university, not knowing what they really wanted to study, but just decided to deciding to jump right in. Um, and then finding out that this was a horrible idea and they hate every minute of it and they don't like what they're studying and now they have all these student loans and it's terrible. Um, that kind of thing. And it could also have been like, you know, imagine like a girl who runs off and gets married at 18 and, you know, ends up with two kids before she's 20 and she's married to this horrible guy. The, um, it's that kind of energy, not just the fighting the battle, but jumping in with complete naivete and, but also with a, a, like a really a sense of willingness. I don't feel like this person was tricked. I feel like they went in with their eyes wide open, but they weren't actually seeing things very clearly when they did it. And this brought them, uh, 
a lot of alienation and pain and poverty and hardships. You know, you guys, you weren't these crows up here hanging out in the tree having a grand old time. You know, these are the crows that you want to be. That These are, you know, the others. And you're out here, you know, down on the ground feeling like, like look at how, I love how sad these crows look. I mean, I don't love that they're sad, but I think the artist did a really good job depicting those crows. It reminds me of at the time, um, like I'm from the west coast um, of Canada uh, and where there's a lot of, lot of crows and about... I mean, I, got, I think it peaked around 10 years ago, but it, it's been going on for a long time where crows were getting uh, West Nile virus. And it, at, at, in the worst of it, I think 50% of the crow population, like on the West Coast, like also down uh, into the States, 50% um, of the crow population just like was a, wiped out uh, by West Nile. Um, luckily, crows are so... Um, abundant that you know that didn't actually like endanger their species and you know they came back but uh getting back to my, my point here is that i remember i was watching the ducks at the duck pond and there was a bunch of crows hanging out in the trees and i i was they caught my attention because there was a lot of squawking going on and it it looked like like three of the crows were like attacking this other crow and i when i took a closer look i saw that the crow on the ground was sneezing and he had like brown feathers like sticking out of him like he was like i was like oh my god you know this crow has west nile this crow is sick and is almost certainly going to die and these other crows know it and they are chasing him off because you know they don't want to catch west nile and end up like him um but it was really heartbreaking heartbreaking to watch i just i wish i could have done something for the poor crow because you know he obviously was suffering and he couldn't even have companionship and care in his suffering. He was basically doomed to, <laughs> to suffer alone, you know, until his end. And it was just, it, you know, I mean, I, I saw this 10 years ago, right. And it, it still is, is with me. So you, you guys, I think are maybe even as you're watching this, still feeling like these crows that are left out in the cold uh, and are, you know, sick and suffering alone. Um, but there, I think also it, it it's that uh, situation where it's almost like, you know, you, you walked into this situation yourself. I don't feel like somebody put you there. I feel like you might have been, you know, misled and taken advantage of in, in a way you know, but I think in a kind of normal way, you know, the way immature friends will kind of get, you know, encourage you to tag along while they get into mischief, it, you know, like, or you were, you know, tricked by a, or not really, not tricked, but given bad advice by a school counselor, you know, to go, go into university when, you know, really you wanted to do something entirely different. Um, and here you are, you're finding just completely disillusioned and hating every minute of it and probably feeling like there's no way out. And because of that, um, here's the seven of swords, you know, I, I feel like there's been so much bitterness like baked into you because of your experiences over the past, I feel, I feel like few years, but you know, it could be any length of time really, uh, that you're wanting to act out and get a little bit of vengeance. I don't feel like it's a lot of vengeance. I feel like you know, because what is this crow doing? He's kind of stealing some swords after the battle is over. It's not really doing anybody any harm, but he's probably kind of running off with the feeling of ha 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 like, you know, I'll, I'm gonna get myself a little bit of compensation here and, you know, I'll stick it to them a little bit. Um, so kind of watch out for that because that is not going to help you heal. It might make you feel a little bit better in the moment, but that is not what you want to be leaning into in order to heal your <laughs> like i feel like you guys uh it's not like one particular thing you need to heal but it's just like your whole life experience um and i mean i think we've all been there at some point or another or we will be there when it feels like we've just made nothing but mistakes and everything we've we've done uh has led us to this place that we just really don't want to be and all we want to do is escape and and wipe the slate clean and you know i've been actually talking about stuff like this with my husband lately you know 
what is good to remember, and this actually syncs up entirely with, with these cards that I'll get to, in, with the oracle cards I'll get to in a minute, is even when something like incredibly shitty happens to you, um, what's been helping me like a lot is to remember that, you know, I have no idea how that's actually going to fold, like unfold. And it can really end up that that horrible thing works out in the long run to be, you know, better for everybody. Uh, one example being, you know, me and my husband uh, met originally because we were both, uh, it, it's a it's a long story about how we met and got together, but let's just say that uh, we met because our friends were playing uh, an online video game and they happened to queue up together. And that's how like me and this like whole circle of friends, including my husband, uh, kind of met playing this free video game when it like on the day that it launched. And so besides the fact of just the miracle of, you know, queuing up together in a four player game. Uh, it takes a lot of synchronicity, synchronicities to make that happen. There's also the fact that none of us would have been playing the game if we weren't so poor that we were excited to get a free game because we literally had nothing else to do. And we were only playing games in the first place because we were so poor. Otherwise, we would have been out doing something more interesting. So, you know, so we really realized that all of the long series of events that put us into a position to be poor and bored and kind of pathetic enough to, like, get excited about uh, some silly little free game... That is why we're together. And obviously we think it's very important <laughs> that we are together. So, you know, even if life is putting you into, into like a really incredibly shitty situation in, you know, a year, five years, 10 years, whatever it is, you're going to be able to look back and see how that was part of your path and how that was part of the web of your life and everybody else's lives, which... We absolutely have here with the tarantula and this card. Uh, first of all, you know, it's a uh, number 13. This is like, you know, a really feminine card. And it talks about rem remembering. Just think of a spider's web, remembering how everything is connected. Everything is connected. You know, if you are, imagine you're like microscopic and you're standing a piece of a spider's web you just think you're on this like narrow path and you can't see where it's going or where it's coming from um and you certainly can't see that it's part of this great tapestry that was designed by this spider <laughs> it's it's that kind of energy i want you to be tapping into remembering that everything is connected everything is connected just think about you know recently uh you can look up on youtube there's been lots of videos about the intergalactic filaments which is sort of like, you know, strings, you know, these like strands of, you know, cosmic dust and gases that are, that link galaxies together. And, you know, we're starting to think about how, uh, you know, it really makes the universe look like it's this giant, a network, you know, like a brain like net, like network with these uh, almost like neural pathways connecting galaxies which is really really mind-boggling to think about and which leads us into karmic relationships orion energy polarity soul growth and conflict and this entirely speaks about um coming to terms with polarity and conflict because obviously uh polarities uh the way we view it now you know good and evil um right and wrong black and white we, we really see that in terms of conflict and humans are always trying to pick a side and then we entrench ourselves in that side and we fight for that side. But all it does is it keeps polarizing and actually energizing the conflict that we're trying to stop. We will never, uh, you know, solve the problem of a polarity by fighting the polarity because that's just energizing it. Um, <laughs> and... If you're into starseed stuff, and uh, definitely somebody watching this uh, has had past lives in Orion, uh, otherwise you wouldn't have synced up with this video. And if that's news to you, um, take this as your Orion activation and go down the rabbit hole of that. Uh, I'm not going to get too into that. That's not really the main topic of this reading. Um, and you don't need to be into, you know, Orion or starseed stuff to, to understand the uh, 
significance of this card. Um, just Orion really symbolizes a place of unresolved, well, not, not unresolved for a long time, right? Polarities that were, uh, you got to think like victim uh, perpetrator polarities that went on really, really viciously for a long time and sort of like it seemed no end in sight. But the solution wasn't to keep fighting the, the wars. It was to resolve the polarity by, you know, finding your neutrality, stepping outside and understanding that everything is connected and that even these traumatic polaric battles are taking place for a reason because things that we can't understand are coming out of them. Um, you know, I always think whenever I think of like polarities generating uh, energy, uh, you know, even as they generate conflict, they're, they're generating energy like, like a, like a piston in an engine or something, right? Um, something is being generated through this conflict, something is being created. And, you know, as the little tiny specks of sand that, you know, each and every human is, we're not like privy to the big picture, not, not yet, right? Not, not at the moment, right? Our consciousness is at the moment when we're standing here in our bodies, most of us can't, uh, can't tune into that cosmic web but of course it's getting uh, easier and easier for us to do that and as you expand your consciousness from a centered place and you know walk your walk your spiritual journey walk your soul path you'll be able to resolve those polarities and see the great cosmic web and that is how you will heal your trauma over how shitty your current situation is by zooming out and getting just a massive bird's eye perspective uh, where you do actually see the cosmic web. And then you'll understand um, that things happened, you know, I don't like really to say for a reason, but it's, it's that the things that happened to you are part of a much larger story. And, you know, one day later on in your life, or when you leave the body, or when you're in another life, uh, you'll be able to get a sense for how everything unfolded in the way it did in order to create the, the big picture of how everything is going to be, right? It's all part of a greater unfolding. And I could kind of ramble on about that uh, for a long, long time, because this is like a huge immensely enormous topic um but hopefully that gives you enough to kind of go on <laughs> go on for now uh if you don't don't really know how to start with this i would just keep saying zoom out look for perspective remember the that the cosmos is like a spider's web and that everything is connected and everything is the way it is because it's a piece of a greater puzzle and i will not repeat myself or keep paraphrasing Again, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna call it quits on this one. Um, and thank you very much for tuning in. And if this resonated with you, I'd really appreciate if you leave me a comment. This is a new project for me, and I would really like to hear from anybody who uh, was tuning into this. Um, and thank you. And we're gonna get on to the next pile. Okay. Hey guys, this is the bottom left pile, and I'm getting. <laughs> ooh, I'm getting shivers just looking at your cards here. Um, Honestly, I'm not really feeling like you guys need to be healing like a wound, like per se, more that you are healing a, almost like a, a state of mind or a situation you were in that, that was just becoming <laughs> like, I mean, it's the hanged man. I, I feel like you've been like waiting, like waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen like you've been incubating yourselves uh and that it's probably been pretty frustrating and maybe this has actually been your entire life or maybe this has actually even been lifetimes of knowing that you are here for greater things but never seeing that manifest in your reality around you and of course, with the hanged man, I always think of, you know, the story of Odin, you know, hanging himself upside down and stabbing a spear in his side uh, on his quest to find the knowledge, you know, the wisdom of the runes. 
Um, and of course he did. So whatever, whatever kind of incubation period you guys have been going through, um, just know that it has been so that you could grow and gather new wisdom. And you really, I feel like you've just been waiting for the right time to kind of unleash yourself into the world. And, you know, maybe you, you had wounds from farther back, either farther back in your, your past. So in your early childhood or, you know, lifetimes ago, and you've sort of been kind of working that out. I mean, this could even manifest to something as mundane as, you know, maybe when you were 18, you went into a lot of debt and kind of ruined your life. And now you're 35 and you're just kind of getting a grip on that. And, uh, you're incredibly frustrated with having, you know, wasted 15 years of your life, just like waiting and waiting and waiting to, for your life to begin. But it, your life is about to begin, right? And it doesn't matter if this has been going on for a year or for lifetimes, uh, your state of waiting and waiting and waiting and learning and studying and preparing, it's all about <laughs> to turn around. And I think, I think, uh, with the judgment in middle, in the middle, in the middle here, whatever is about to turn around for you, you're probably seeing like the, the beginning, the first waves of it. You probably already know that this is happening. I think you guys, uh, know what I'm talking about. I, I feel like this is one of those readings that is going to catch somebody's attention. Um, this judgment card, uh, you know, man, you can look, look, you guys got three major arcana, just like, that's it. Uh, the hanged man judgment and the fool, which is an awesome order to get these in. Um, the judgment, uh, I almost feel like you are the judge here that you are this crow like busting out going like this is this is my time i have paid my dues i have prepared i have waited around i have gathered the wisdom and the knowledge and the tools i needed and this is it like the stars are aligning it's time for me to to bust out and really share with whatever you have to share with the world and of course with the fool card you know you're starting your hero's journey. I just, I, I love these pink flowers there. I was really, really drawn to those. Um, this, this, I love, this is just a beautiful fool card. Uh, he's poised here floating on this log, but looking out, you know, kind of wistfully uh, into the future. I think this crow knows that he's destined for great things and, um, uh, you know, most of the fool cards really have that kind of like bumbling, uh, naive young man. Uh, and you really have a sense of nervousness for him as if he's doesn't really know what he's getting into. But with these these two cards preceding it and just the art on this particular fool card, uh, I feel like this this fool knows what he's doing. And I don't feel nervous for you, your, you guys at all as you step off into your journey um, because it's time, right? This is like cosmically orchestrated for you to finally unleash your yourself and we have the red crowned crane loyalty um so this card uh i mean loyalty obviously being you know in the obvious way of just you know keeping your word being loyal to others you know being a good friend all of that is there but it's uh to me it's more of an energy of being, being like a rock, you know, being steadfast, uh, being the unstoppable force or the immovable object as, <laughs> which I, I mean is great as you are unleashing yourself, you know, you, you have this stability, this loyalty to yourself. Also this, uh, security with your mission or, you know, your project, your, your lifestyle, um, I don't even want to get too much into too many details about, you know, how this could be manifesting in your life. Cause I think, you know what I mean? And I think for the people who picked, um, this bottom left pile that this could be, I feel like you guys are really diverse and this could be popping up in a lot of different ways for you guys. So, um, fill in the details for yourself. I don't know what you're unleashing other than that. I, I feel like it's coming from really deep within yourselves and that you've been incubating this for a long time and that you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And 
the or yes other oracle card here is a uh, forge don't follow pave a new path be the leader you wish you had which i i love it's so beautiful uh like mm, you know be a trailblazer you know maybe you never had uh parents that you could look up to maybe you even never even had any good teachers maybe you guys um didn't even understand the concept of a role model because you never saw anybody who really was that worth looking up to in a way that was resonant with you so that you never really had a role model and you've just been paving your own path and it hasn't been easy and you've been in this place of detached waiting almost like if if the phrase you know uh positive what is it optimistic nihilism <laughs> uh i think that's that's kind of the state where you've been right where you've been nihilistic in the in the sense of saying you know nothing none of this matters you know we're not there's no purpose to my life there's no purpose to us being here um and although you might have gone through like a really negative phase with that i, I feel like you've recently ended up into a place where you've been optimistic about it almost that you know really atheistic ag agnostic idea of uh, yeah, there's no purpose to anything in the universe, but, um, but I create my own purpose, right? My life is going to be meaningful because I'm going to create my own meaning. I feel like that's where you're coming from, but, um, you're also moving past that and you're, uh, going to be waking up to the idea that not really that, you know, that there's a meaning to, to everything, but that there are meanings out there. And that you have a part to play. Uh, you have tasks to accomplish. And that you did actually come here for a particular reason. And I don't know what your reasons are. Because you are a unique, unique leader. You are the trailblazer. You're the guy at the front of the party. Marching through the forest. You know, with the machete. Chopping through the undergrowth. Um... Man, you guys could be even uh, awaking, waking up um, like dormant, like psychic abilities that you never even thought that you would have never entertained as being within the realm of possibility. You, you might be the person to to manifest those. I feel like this year, like in in twenty twenty, um, or you know whenever. A year from now is when you watch this. My readings are timeless, so uh, don't don't worry about 2020 the year. Worry about um, when you're syncing up with this uh, pocket of energy. Forge don't follow. Like this is this is a really cosmic cosmic feel to it. Um, you, so, some of you are going to be spiritual leaders, and you're not necessarily going to be spiritual leaders in like the sense of being a priest or being a monk or being a guru or even by getting up on YouTube and, you know, being one of those kind of spiritual teachers, you're, you could be teaching, you know, teaching, sp spreading your energy, right? Uh, you know, through your art, through your business, um, just by sitting on a bench and your energy like positively affecting the people who pass you by, you, you are going to be a vortex of soul growth and consciousness evolution for everybody you come into contact with in a way that is completely unlike um, and any <laughs> anybody else you've ever known before. You know, you're not following in the footsteps of a leader. You're going to be your own leader. Um, I mean, uh, the planet Uranus comes to mind. Uh, if you're into astrology, check out your chart for any... Um, either significant Uranus placements in your natal chart or transits happening right now. Um, you know, that being the planet of individuation. Um, like I have uh, my son conjunct Uranus uh, in my natal chart and like all my life, if there was, I was never sure of anything in life, but there was one thing, one thing I was sure of. And that was that I was here to be an individual. And, but more than that, to help, or not so much to help, but to inspire other people to individuate. Just like I, I like hold the energy of individuation, and you guys do too. Like, y y <laughs> we, 
some of you were part of a, a soul group here. If you guys are, are tuning into this. And I don't really think you guys need any, you don't need to hear anything else uh, from me. I'm going to keep this pretty, I get it's actually kind of short and kind of open-ended. Um, but I think that will be perfect for you guys because this is just, this is just one small synchronicity and a series of events in your life that are reminding you of who you are and what you came here to do, why you came here. Even if, you know, you do, this doesn't have to be like a huge uh, project. Like, you don't, you don't need to go off and be a rocket scientist or be president, you know, you could literally sit in the woods in a cave and do nothing. And that could be the thing that you were sent here to do because energetically you were holding that energy of individuation. And by doing so, you are forging that path. You're forging and reinforcing the path of individuation and individuality. And you don't even need to be interacting with anybody to be doing that. So, I mean, all I can say to you guys is keep, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing and like, don't look back and don't, don't compare yourself to anybody else in any way because you are sovereign consciousnesses that are here to be the ultimate aspect of individuation. <laughs> and I just, I love this. I, I, I love this reading. I love this energy. Uh, it's awesome. You guys are awesome. We're all awesome. <laughs> and uh, with that, I'm going to just say if anybody resonated with this, I'd really, uh, really enjoy it if you left me a comment because this is a new project for me. And I would love to hear from anybody who's tuning into this. And um, that's all for this pile. I'll see you uh, in pile four. Hey, guys, this is the bottom right corner. And... When I picked up your cards, uh, <laughs> I, I felt this like jolt and I was like, this is going to be something cosmic and lay out the cards and here we go. Because, <laughs> you know, for a reading that is supposed to be about what you need to heal, it was a little bit odd to first pop up the Ace of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. Like, let's just pull these up right, right at the same time because these, these are really, these go together, right? It's like, what is there to heal about? ace to queen of pentacles that's awesome like these are awesome cards you have mastered you've gone through your material journey from having you know maybe you've gone from having nothing and here you are you have you know you have your house in the suburbs with two cars and a cat and a dog and you know you've <laughs> you've almost it's almost like you've done it all there's nothing left to there's nothing left to tell in your story of the material world. And I mean, you don't need to be like living a luxurious life for this to apply. Um, it could even just be that, you know, you've gained a lot of knowledge about the way the world works in, you know, street smarts or in the sciences, um, whatever it is that you're into in the material world, you've mastered it. Like you've done it. And for a while that was satisfying, but what is the danger when you've, you know, done this this journey and completed it. Well, it's like when you get back from vacation. I mean, you're you're maybe uh, uh, you know, it's good for a while, um, but then you know you're ready for the next vacation, right? After after getting back to work, you're you're ready to to go out. You don't want to plateau. You're ready to go on to the next level. And you guys are starting to hear whispers of, you know, there's something more. There's something more than this material world you've built around you, and I think. You're also just starting to get like bored um, of bored of, you know, your lifestyle, even though it's everything you always wanted. You know, maybe you get, um, you know, you eat at fancy restaurants and you get to do everything you like to do, you know, whether that's golfing or partying or staying at home and playing video games, um, hanging out with your friends going hiking, camping, traveling the world, whatever it is that you do, it used to bring you infinite satisfaction and pleasure and joy, but it's becoming kind of monotonous, not really monotonous, but it's become so normal that there's nothing left for you to do. It's like when you're finished playing a video game, well, you've, you've done the game, so you don't want to play it anymore because now you're, you've done it and it's boring. You need, you need something new. So this um, moon card popping up, 
this is why I feel like you're starting to get whispers of something more. And this is entirely normal. This is happening to everybody right now. This is, this is, this was me like a year ago. Um, you know, <laughs> I had, uh, like I wasn't well, I wasn't even well off, but I was like, I had re reached a plateau in my material world and I was suddenly become bored of it. And the whispers of, first of all, doubt that there wasn't, I used to think that there was nothing more to the cosmos than what we could see and feel. And then I, I started to doubt that I started to become interested in just, you know, something more. What, what more is there? I wanted to know what more is. And let me tell you, uh, I found out, I, I mean, I'm still finding out every day I'm finding out, but you know, my journey over the past year has, has been going from being, you know, the queen of pentacles, uh, journeying, you know, to the moon and beyond into the, into the wild unknown. And of course there is a certain amount of fear that comes with that, with this hyena, uh, those, the caption above the hyena is fear. Uh, but what is, what, what is fear talking about here? Because as you can see this, uh, Hyena is like bridging between the worlds, the world of, you know, abundance in life and light and, you know, the world of the dead. And that's actually, you know, what hyenas do as scavengers, you know, gar uh, disposing of all of the, the dead bodies. And in a lot of myths, they are seen as the animals or the spirits that bring, you know, other spirits through the veil, you know, into whatever is beyond, into the afterlife, into um, the realm of spirit. And I think you guys are being asked to take that plunge, not just because you're like bored with your material world and ready to move on, but also to bring balance back in to your life. Um, and as I said that, I noticed that this moon is, looks like a yin yang, except it's out of balance. Like it's not a perfect, <laughs> um, you know, match these two sides uh, of this moon aren't the same size. So since you've had so much focus on the physical, which isn't necessarily bad, but eventually that gets to be out of balance, right? Like that was what you were working on then. And don't let people like, you know, rag on you for being materialistic or too concerned about the physical. It's like, no, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you came here to do. And that's what you experienced. And now it's time to move on. That was just one phase in your journey. And you guys are like, you're peering through the veil. And peering through the veil is both. That is how you will heal and bring balance to um, your material self and all the aspects of your consciousness that were embedded in the material world and probably kind of alienated by that. Like all the other parts of you that um, are non-material want to be brought back in right and you're you're this you're kind of like this hyena uh looking through the veil um looking through the illusions uh, the moon always with the illusions you know it's like you guys want to bust out of the matrix you're, you're starting i i don't feel like you're very far along this journey but you're definitely on the path because you you are feeling those whispers and you're starting to see that feel like the veil is thinning and you want, you're starting to feel like you are trapped in a matrix and you want out of it. And so, okay, <laughs> how are you going to do all this? Well, here we go. Breath of the cosmos, my will to thy will, micromanaging the universe. My will to thy will, breath of the cosmos. So I think the... The first thing I'd like to mention here is the micromanaging the universe. When you're in this Queen of Pentacles energy, there is that energy of micromanaging, but also just managing in general, feeling like everything in your material world that you need to do. You need to be responsible for it. You need to control it. You need to accomplish it. Then nothing will just work out by itself. Um, and trust me, I know how that feels because <laughs> I, have, I have been there. And, you know, over the past year, I've really had to learn to, to let go and to let nature take its course. And, you know, we say let nature take its course, um, you know, when we're talking about, you know, things out in the wild, but it's also just things, the people in your environment, you know, your workplace environment, every, the, even the, the, the artificial human ecosystem around you, you can let that take its course and it will be fine. And once you actually 
practice letting go a little bit, then you'll be more and more encouraged seeing that things don't fall apart just because you weren't, you know, supervising it. Um, the only thing is, of course, if, if you step up to do everything, it'll get done on your timeline, although not really, right? Because <laughs> you're going to encounter endless amounts of frustrations and setbacks. But And if you let things take their course naturally, things might take a little bit longer. But of course, they'll have taken no effort from your part and you can just sit back and watch it unfold. So that is, I think, a minor, well, not like minor, but it's, it's the lesser issue here. Um, the larger issue being, you know, breath of the cosmos, my will to thy will. Um, as you're being asked to see through illusions and see through the veil and bust out of the matrix, you're also, you know, you're going to, you need to do that by <sighs> surrendering to whatever it is that you think you can surrender to. Um, you know, this is going to vary depending on everyone's, you know, personal beliefs. Um, any, any deities or energies or structures that come to mind when I'm talking about this, surrender to those. Say, you know, and at first you won't know how to do this. Uh, you won't understand even how to begin to do this. So, I mean, what I did was I would just sit down and I would meditate and I'd ask, I'd tell the universe is like, I would like to learn how to let go. I would like to learn how to surrender myself when I choose, but I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Um, but you know, I would just kind of put that intention out there and slowly over the year, uh, a whole bunch of stuff happened and it slowly, you know, my journey about that unfolded. Um, and that's what you guys can do. And I don't even want you to think like now you're sitting here thinking, going, Oh, how do I surrender? What, what am I even surrendering to? Um, but actually like stop thinking that because that, <laughs> that is more micromanaging and that is more working in the place of pentacles, uh, the queen of pentacles energy. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. You're trying to figure out how to surrender, but like, Truly surrendering is surrendering without even knowing how you're doing it or even like what you're surrendering to. So, you know, if this feels good to you, if this resonates like deep down, not in your mind, but like in your heart, in your soul, if this is resonating with you, just put the intention out there, even just to your subconscious, you know, to your higher self, to the, to the universe that you would like to learn to surrender and to learn to go with the cosmic flow. That is the breath of the cosmos, right? Thinking of the, the great, all of the cycles within cycles within cycles in the universe and learning to just ride them out. Imagine the whole universe breathing. Think about how long a cosmic breath must take, like on a human scale. You know, how many breaths have I taken since uh, recording this video? Well, for the universe that has been, you know, I imagine that it hasn't even been like a fraction of a second for of, of a single breath. You know, we're all here riding the pulse of the cosmos as it breathes in and breathes out. And as you surrender to that, that is going to be the beginning of your journey. And these cards don't go past that. And I think right now you don't need to look past that. You don't need to look down the road to see how your journey unfolds because that letting go, that surrendering to the cosmic flow is how you begin. And right now just focus on your beginning. That will bring balance to your, to your lifestyle and, really on a soul level. I, I feel like in, in some ways, you know, living in this pentacle energy, not that it's bad, never that it's bad, but that it has definitely brought an imbalance to your consciousness. And now it's going to take a little bit of work um, to evolve, to expand back past that. But don't worry, because uh, once you <laughs> surrender to the flow, it's going to flow. And I think that's all I'm seeing for you guys. 
Um, yeah, just be brave as you, as you peer beyond the veil, you know, even if you're afraid, um, that's when you, you can surrender your fear, surrender your fear to whatever you want to surrender it to. And if you don't know what to surrender it to, just surrender it out there to nothing. And that will put you on the waves of your journey. And I hope that you guys will uh, tune into my channel again later uh, for future readings. Because um, I would love to know how you guys are unfolding and how these journeys are working out for you. Uh, as we all continue to evolve in this new decade. And... That's actually the end of the video, so please leave me a comment and like and subscribe if this resonated with you. This is a new project for me, and I would really like to connect with anybody who is uh, kind of syncing up with these energies. Um, so I hope to see you guys again in the future, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.